Pop of the morning, everybody, and welcome to Popcorn Culture. As always, I am your one true host, Jazzy J, joined as usual by my brother, the one true co-host, Buzzy Benjamin B. Ben, uh, you're going to have to explain yourself. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, if I'm not going to be the host, then I'm not going to wear the host apparel, oh. <laughs> and therefore I can do whatever I want. Uh, have you been, I didn't, I wasn't even aware that this entire time you've been specifically carrying carefully choosing your wardrobe to oh, uh, absolutely. reflect week, hostmanship week in week out. I have carefully worn whatever I put on that morning yeah. as a, as a measure of my hostmanship. Okay. And now that I am not a host, the, I, I just intend to take a, a brand new approach, a brand new approach. I see you've gone, um, for the people who can't see us because they're not watching the video, just listening to the audio, you've gone with some what looks like frayed jorts, yep. leather boots, a um, sport wicking hoodie, yeah, yeah, and yeah. a flowery jacket. This, these are the, the, okay. Uh, truly, and sunglasses. Truly, <laughs> truly spectacular assessment of the situation. Okay, indeed, indeed. I'm, I'm actually, I'm very comfortable today. I feel like I'm in my, my element. I do not believe you because I am also wearing just a sweatshirt and I'm kind of warm. And you're, you're in double layers over there. Double layers is true. Yeah, it's true. I have, but, but as you stated before, my under layer is slightly moist, moisture wicking. Oh, okay, and therefore, uh, helping. A percentage amount. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's just wicking that moisture right away. Just, just every second. It's wicking it so cool, <laughs> so cool over there. Yeah, yeah. I will say that my my particular uh, sweatshirt is not moisture wicking. I wouldn't say at all. Yeah. Um. Yeah. For some reason, uh, this the, I'm I'm wearing my salty dog cafe, which has almost become I feel like my official uniform for popcorn culture. I think this is maybe the second, possibly third week in a row I'm wearing it just it, by coincidence. It almost means that we need <clears throat> like a a salty dog. Esque. Esque. Popcorn culture, crew neck, Ooh, sweater. Dude, I would totally be all about like an oversized sweatshirt item. Just like a, it's like, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a comfy sweater. Like yeah. A sweaty. A comfy, I almost said a comfy sweaty. <laughs> like, it, when are you, it, that's so humid. So, man. It's coming it is back. So it's humid. catching on. There's no doubt. I, I always, I think what's weird right now is that like this, this particular style, like, like oversized sweatshirts are sort of. You know, um, they're humid right now. Oh, they are. They are like they're like <clears throat> they're almost as humid as using the word humid to describe things that are currently in and or cool. Right. Yeah. Exactly. What's surprising to me is that this is like a trend in the middle of summer when it's like blazing, blazing hot outside. It's <laughs> and like, true. I really enjoy the look overall, but every time I'm like, I anytime the temperature dips. Even like moderately, I'm like, what is it going to be? Low seventies today. I need to bust out some long sleeves. Let's 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 put this sweatshirt through its paces. I, you know, it is funny. This is probably the first summer of my life that I have regularly worn like a long sleeve shirt. Yeah. With my shorts, mm. and I'm I'm not really sure like if it if it's just like like fashion out there letting me know that that's like an okay thing to do or actually the moisture wicking t-shirt that i'm wearing right now is from uh it's like a fly fishing brand i think called like free fly oh um and what i have found with it is that like because it's got like uv protection and it's like meant to be worn on a hot day i've actually been blown away at the fact that like if you are like sheltering your skin underneath coverage it's like an odd way to actually remain cool. Oh, right. Like it blocks the sun. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which is like one of those like things that I never would have given any credence to at all. It's like long sleeves means hotter. Right. That's that's like the conventional wisdom. But I think this is maybe like the same with like if you whenever you see like in movies and because I'm sure they're entirely accurate people out in the desert, they're all it feels like always wearing long sleeve stuff. Is I, I, I have never noticed. I've never put this two and two together. Yeah. OK, well, be on the lookout for it next time you're out there. OK, a movie where they're in the desert everyone's got like it's so much more about like blocking the sun from hitting your skin than it is how hot i guess at that point it's just like yeah you're gonna be hot so 
You got to protect hey, yourself. Just at least, prefer, at least you're not getting sunburned now. <laughs> oh, oh, goodness me! You know what? I think I do understand what you're saying now. This is more like a like bear grill surviving in like the like the outback or something is going to be like fully yeah. covered head to toe, right? Versus, I thought you just meant like people who live in Arizona. Oh no, not like Arizona. I'm talking I was about like, like o- over in like Africa or something. Must must be that dry right heat in, creeping in. That, that dry heat, not that wet heat. Yeah, no, that like like people riding camels and stuff. Okay, okay, yeah. Um, so Jay, speaking of things that are currently heat, humid okay um or or dry heat for that matter um i uh, was just chatting with my wife alice yesterday about a new trend that i don't even think is that new because it seems like it's been around now for a few years but it's, it's like nude it's it's oh i see what you did there. Uh-huh. yeah because that's that's <laughs> alice's new shop uh nude salem on Instagram, if you want to go check it out, and TikTok um, now, and TikTok, where she's been making some great TikToks. No I've, doubt. I've been very proud of her. Like she comes home and she's like, "Oh yeah, I had to film a bunch of TikToks today." I'm like, "When did your job change?" Yeah, like <laughs> we, you just have the same job now. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's very funny. Yeah. Um, but th- this is a trend that I'm about to tell you about that I know that Alice, uh, or that I know that has been around at least for a period of time, and Alice has now like accepted or, or wants to be like a part of okay but it is the it is the act of wearing um shoes that are like intended to be white but made to look like very 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 scuffed up and dirty oh okay uh, i don't know if you've seen this or not but like there's there's like um it typically like take a pair of like chucks yeah. you know like like the classic sneaker yeah and like a like a brand new pair of white chucks is like as stark white as as they get okay and so apparently like what 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 folk are actually doing is going through and like intentionally making them look like you've recently walked through uh like dirt so she wants to buy like stark white ones and then like are those stomping around in some mud well so it seems that that is how it that, that it originally had started and i don't know if like what happened here was <coughs> it was almost like one of those things where like having something that's more broken in is actually more appealing than having something that's like that is obviously brand new yeah if that makes sense <coughs> mm-hmm. um and i can sort of understand that kind of like going back to like my my climbing days or whatever like i i felt like the more banged up like my shoes were or the more chalked over like my chalk bag or shorts or anything was like the more like legit I looked. Oh uh, yeah. You know? Um which did just happen kind of, you know, very, very yeah, it naturally. Just happens naturally. Yeah, yeah. But like if you saw someone come in with like brand new climbing shoes that wasn't necessarily the mark of like a, a crazy experienced climber. Mm-hmm. Like the more banged <laughs> up they were, it was almost more like, oh man, like this guy knows what he's doing. This guy. Um and so that's my assumption is that like there was something that like like there was a growing appeal to like, oh, man, like these are chucks that they've clearly worn for like the past like seven years. And that's better than if they could buy like a brand new pair. But then people started doing it on purpose. And now there is like a like a, a brand of designer shoe. And I wish I could even like come up with what it is. because okay. like, I don't even know like what the name of the brand is, but I, I personally don't like them. But Alice is now like is she wants a pair, mm. but they are shoes that are sold brand new new pre-scuffed for you brand new pre-scuffed <clears throat> brand new pre-scuffed and these are and because this is going to fall into that like we don't own stuff like this for what it's worth um and <clears throat> and i would say that the only way that ally would would get them is if she could get them like through her consignment stuff at nude yeah um but like brand new these designer shoes would sell for like six hundred dollars what and yeah <clears throat> and when you buy them and this is not like like you know that i like sneakers and stuff like when nike drops a pair of rare sneakers they sell them for like a standard you know msrp price yeah you know they don't come out costing twelve hundred dollars from nike right like people buy them and they resell them and, and that's when it goes up and that's where you get like the yeah. intrinsic value from yeah and and so it's not necessarily like like nike is not scoring on these crazy collectible prices right it's it's the collectors themselves who do um nike's just scoring because they're nike in yeah. the meantime so they're they're fine yeah <laughs> um, they still sold out <laughs> they still sold out but so this is a company that like from the box from the retailer is six hundred dollars? So yeah. This is not like a collectible type of, of scenario. But yeah, I mean, like they come and they just look positively dirty and like dingy and like it's not even like like colorful dirt, you know? Like like it doesn't even have the decency of being like red dirt, yeah. brown. Dirt. It's like it's like gray smudginess. Uh, I know, and I, I can't I don't get it. I know it's the funniest thing. And so she was showing them to me last night, 
And um, my brother-in-law, Mike, was over and he was telling me that like when his youngest sister was going to school at the University of Virginia, she bought a new pair of Chucks and like intentionally did this exact thing mm. so that she could she could like have the look and i'm like i don't get what's going on here that's uh it's surprising to me although because like i think i don't know if we talked about an afterthought of pop of the main episode but i was recently um, entering a shoe lottery myself yeah for How, the, did you ever for, hear back i did hear back i didn't i didn't get it oh, unfortunately but those are for the uh gob stomper shoes okay which are this like jimmy fallon branded shoe and the idea there was that um shoes are inevitably going to get scuffed and i think they were specifically for like skating um so you would wear them and they would look white but then as you scuffed them and had like this very colorful layer underneath that could be revealed as they got scuffed so then but like then it feels much more like you're you're like engaging in a piece of almost like interactive art absolutely yeah it's like this is like the scuffing is inevitable and now no doubt people bought them and scuffed them in specific ways so that they looked a certain way or whatever but even even that it's like you had to buy them and scuff them yourself as opposed to just like, I would like to pre-purchase some gob stompers that someone has already scuffed for me. In you know, like that seems like I don't, it does seem weird to buy them the pre scuff. I thought like this, maybe it's the same as like buying like ripped jeans or something. Maybe it is the same thing as ripped jeans. I guess. That's a very good comparison. But like, I can't believe I didn't get there sooner. I, I mean, I guess it's the same except that like, ripping and being dirty are not the same thing you're not buying like mud mud jeans you know i know that's <laughs> true that's true but i do think the appeal of ripped jeans had to come in some capacity from what it said about the wearer of the jeans yeah like like obviously I, like when they first released <clears throat> denim jeans they weren't selling them pre-torn right that was happening through like you know, hours of, of labor and hard right. work and, yeah. and the sort. And so then like what would happen is it was almost like, you know, like, oh man, yeah, like this this person like works so hard that their jeans are like torn up. Yeah. And and maybe just as a simple byproduct of that hard work, they're also just, you know, fit, as they would say on mm, Long Island. Right. You know, which is to say attractive. Um and therefore the the joining of the um of the tears in the pants as part of the aesthetic yeah with with someone who is then otherwise also desirable due to their hard working nature mm-hmm. yeah this is i'm feeling like this is probably where it's starting to come from but it feels like a greater leap because like denim has such an obvious origin story as right. a very like utilitarian fabric it was meant to be like sturdy it was being used for like things like mining yeah you know <clears throat> whereas like like stark white sneakers are not exactly in any way, shape or form ever associated with like the, the grand. Right. Yeah. It doesn't, it, it does feel like it's hitting the same chord, but it's like coming from a very different place of like, it feels forced to me, but yeah. I mean, Hey, this is fashion is never something for you to like correct. Fashion is just happening. It's true. You know? It's true. <clears throat> so this has been like a, a curiosity that I've sort of had. If we want to have one of uh, Ben's deep brain dives, oh. if you will, um, is it is it an okay time to go about this? You are the host after all. Well, I mean, we, we can. I had a particular quote here I wanted to run by you as a potential Ben brain dive. Well, you know what? Let's park mine for now. <clears throat> okay. I'll try to remember what it is. We'll come back to it. You give me the quote. Okay. All right. So I saw this uh, on Instagram a couple weeks ago. I wrote it down because it immediately made me think of you Okay. when I read it. Okay. So this is by uh, Emmanuel uh, Acho. Ocho. Okay. I'm sure you know he does the um, uh, awkward conversation or difficult conversations with the black man. Yes. Yeah. No, he is very, very, very articulate. Yeah, um, very articulate, really gained a ton of popularity, specifically during like the big BLM movement during COVID. I think he's like randomly hosted things for The Bachelor and still hosts his show, Un- Uncomfortable Conversations with the Black Man. That's okay, got it, called. got it. Yes. Yeah, I know exactly who you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, follow him on Instagram. And this was just, it was just a complete quote on there one day. But the quote is just... Your life doesn't need to make sense to other people, and other people's lives don't need to make sense to you. Man, if this is something <clears throat> that we could all center around, mm-hmm. I think we would all deeply benefit. I yes, I completely agree. <laughs> it's yeah. it's a uh, it's it's really strange, um, and I think that it actually possibly goes hand in hand with the thought process that I've kind of been having. Yeah, which is to say <laughs> that like. 
typically what I'm attempting to do is, is like distill out, you know, like the essence of all of the various like, um, initiatives and movements and things like that out there that are all like operating with this goal of, um, better understanding about people who are, are different for one reason or another, you know, and, and kind of like shedding light on, on things because a lot of what that does is, um, it knocks down this, uh, like unknown. And, and that kind of goes back to like every, everybody, when it comes down to it, your fears are almost all rooted in the unknown. Mm -hmm. So it's like the idea of all the, all the various like, you know, movements and stuff like that. It's like, it's to, to get you to know it better. And then if you know it better, you can be more comfortable with it. And then that comfort will hopefully, you know, um, uh, encourage a greater sense of togetherness. Sure. Right. Does yeah. That all makes sense. So sort of the, the query that I was going to, um, like lob out there. And, and this is sort of just like the, like the root of the idea, not like a fully polished conclusion okay. for what it's worth. So I, that's why I wanted to have a conversation about it to see like where it might take me, uh, or us for that matter. And, uh, what holes you might be able to poke in it as a concept. Okay. But like, Almost if the idea of self-expression at its core should be like one of our most like fundamental and important like aspects both to place some value in and also uh, have a considerable amount of respect for. Okay. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. Because it's, it's, it's interesting like because I, I, I think – that at the root of a lot of like what drives everybody, whether it's like, oh, I want to drive like that shiny car or wear these like scuffed up shoes or, you know, whatever the case may be, is that like it, it all has to do with like the way in which you are attempting to express who you are, which is a difficult thing to communicate. It's like trying to control other people's perceptions of you. In some capacities it is, yeah. but like it, it, the other thing too is it's, it's like, um, I'll use name of the wind for an example where, where like Elodin asks quote to describe the color blue, Yeah, you know, and it's like, you can show examples of what the color blue is, but can you describe a color with words? Right. No. And, and typically the answer is no, because like the color is the color. It is the thing itself. Right. And so it's like your sense of self I feel like is very similar to like, like the, like the color blue, you know, it's like, I don't know how to tell you who my sense of self is. All I can do is try to use things such as sunglasses or my floral jacket mm. or my, my, my leather CrossFit boots, you know, or whatever as like, it's like, these are all examples of things that I am trying to use to communicate the color blue to you. Right. Which is to say like, like my sense of self. And so when it comes down to it in some capacities, it's like each of these, and, and it doesn't even have to be like physical objects, you know, like it doesn't necessarily need to be something you can, you can purchase, but it could be like hobbies or the way that you spend your time or, you know, I don't know, different aspects of your personality, I yeah. suppose. Um, but when it comes down to it, it's like if you could get everybody to agree on the idea that like self-expression is this like sacred thing and that you you would never go about combating someone's sense of self-expression, mm -hmm. then I feel like it's almost the type of thing where you could also feel that much more secure in your own. It's like it's like everybody agrees that like anything that anybody's doing as like as long as it's not hurting someone else, you know, as a sense of self-expression it's like is immediately and always valid. Right. That, so that is, that is like the, the core of my, my proposal to the humans of planet earth, to the humans of planet earth. Yeah. <clears throat> as, as if like, is there a way that this is like across the board true? Because by its very nature, it is not, it's not a very like rigid assertion. Mm hmm. Um, which is to say like every single person is going to have completely different parameters as to how this applies to them. Right. But then anything that you observe of someone else, like you, for example, looking at me, you could be like, well, that's a silly jacket. And it's like, ah, but it's part of his self-expression and therefore like sacred to him. Right. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. It's like a funnel that I think that you can then like 
Like it makes you so much more open as you like look around. It's almost like if you take your your elbows, put them at your rib cages and sort of like face them out at 45 degree angles. It's like everything that falls inside of that space, everywhere you look at all times, it's like these are acceptable things, you know? Right. Um, although it's I, I don't want it to become a problematic assertion either where it's like, oh, that person's doing something awful. Well, that's OK. It's part of it. It's part of them expressing. Well, that, that's I mean, that's yeah, definitely right. Like draw a line. It's just like, yeah, you can't you can't be like hateful or malicious with, uh, you know, uh, some sort of like self-expression or something. Then that's right. You know, right. That's and probably less OK. But it's probably still even stuff like that is still like coming from a place of fear more than anything else. It's true. Yeah. It's true. And and so maybe that's maybe that's the difficulty here is that like something that you might see as problematic is because it challenges your own sense of self. Yeah. But that would be the other question is that if if it was a more common practice maybe less people would feel that sense of like that sense of worry mm. that like that their sense of self is going to be like called into question. Well, I think it's, I mean, do you think people just aren't expressing themselves or, or like having forms of self-expression that often? Do you think most people are just like holding it in all the time? No, 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 no. I, <laughs> I would, I do think that people, um, are, are big on self-expression. Like mm-hmm. I, I would say like the, the difficulty is like how much that self-expression is like like people are operating without like the either they are operating without the worry or they can even remove within themselves a sense of judgment towards others like the the negativity that could be attached by somebody who disagrees with someone else's sense of self you think people are just judging other people all the time yeah pretty much pretty much okay Uh, and, and maybe not all the time and maybe not everyone but um, like it, it's, it's, it's sort of like my, my question is like, is this the key that you could insert into the lock that would basically help all people understand one another better? I mean, it is certainly like fear of criticism that like, I think halts lots of probably self-expression in general. Right. Right. Like, I mean, uh, but like for your, your classic examples, like, I'm sure that's why you have trouble like going on the dance floor at weddings. Oh yeah, you know it's true. It's right, like that could just be a form of like. Have you ever seen someone out there and been like, that person cannot dance? No, no, right. Uh, <laughs> other than myself, right, which is the only which is the only instance I've ever had. And this it's so funny too because people uh, oftentimes like you know I I will know that they'll have like a skill and and so I will suggest to them because it's what I do to everybody. But like, um, I'm like, oh my gosh, like you know something, you know how to do something, or you have like a skill that is like highly like like other people want to know how to do what you know how to do so well and you're good at explaining it i'm like you should make like little like vignettes or tiktoks or something about your skill Mm -hmm. and uh so frequently people will be like oh well i don't like the way that my voice sounds on camera which is uh a very common thing for people to feel yeah uh because typically and, and this is this is the thing is that everybody has always heard you differently than the way that you hear yourself right and so the thing is is that it's most jarring to you to hear your own voice your your voice your voice only sounds different to you on camera it sounds like if you like when you hear anyone else's voice on camera they sound the same as when you just talk to them yeah 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 it's just your voice that sounds different and everyone's having to listen to it all the time anyway right but it's interesting that like you'd be like oh yeah you should put that on like tiktok or something because like it's interesting that you, like your gut decision like like reaction to be like you should put this on somewhere else because like that might be like i can see people's reaction also being like like well, I, don't, I don't have any interest on being on tiktok no and, and you know. yeah that's that's super fair um it, and maybe at times it's almost like i like it's it's a um like way that i know how to contribute to like what could be right someone's no, like i took i completely understand it's like it's you know i think so often it's like it's easy to put your own worldview and apply it like everywhere it's like you know i think you know for probably for for a while to me it would have been I, I think i would have operated under some like um, assumption that like at 
everyone wants to be on YouTube or TikTok or something. And they absolutely would be if they just had like an idea that they could implement. Yeah. Or that like, you know, like and not, the only thing stopping anyone from doing it is the fact that they're unsure if it's going to work. You right. Know? And it's just like, that's just not true. Some people just do not care at all about, being, you know, wanting to be on YouTube or social media or anything. And it's like, it is not a concern for them in the slightest. <laughs> right. Well, and, and maybe that's why I tend to see a lot of myself in these people that I might be communicating with because very like, like I, it's not something that I had even wanted from the start, but right. I, but I also know that retroactively or, or, you know, like if I like sort of like look back on myself and sort of like my state of being, my state of mind sort of before, during, after like the launch of, the the like you know d- doing what we do yeah my measure of self worth like it was like it, to my own surprise it went up right you know and so I was like oh man like I feel better about who I am and I feel a little bit more confident in my own skin and like I'm I am now more willing to like express myself in these ways and and you know, like we you know whatever may end up being the case um and so I do feel like I broke out of my shell a lot through the process of you know the the journey yeah and it was something that like i was like that that i didn't know on the on the front end of things would happen like i wasn't seeking out that conclusion it was more of like a, like a ha- like a happy byproduct of of the situation itself um and so maybe that's a lot of times like where i'm like oh my gosh like you know i feel like you'll you'll end up being so much more confident in yourself if if you realize how much you have to like offer the world like you, you just got to let people know that, right. it's, that it's in there, that you've got this, mm-hmm. you know, and, and maybe that's, that's a part of it is like, I want you to experience the good thing that I experienced. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like, you want to be able to share that. Um, but yeah, dancing it's that's, and, and maybe that's, maybe that's part of it is like, you just gotta, and maybe that's what would happen too. Cause, um, I've always struggled with it forever and ever and ever. And maybe if I ever could figure out how to go and do it, then I would be like, it's like all I would want to do. Right. Like, yeah. Like, dude, it's Friday night. We're going out. I'm putting on my Let's dancing shoes. I own dancing shoes. Uh, that's <laughs> it. Let's go. Yeah. I have specific. I'm ready to get out there. This is like, it's such a weird thing because like, even with that, like, I feel like I, my, I bet, I bet like if you, for some reason took like a, like a solo trip to New York city or something and like, we're just wandering the streets and saw some dance club and we're like, I'm just going to go in. I'm just gonna, you know, like, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. (laughs) It would, it occurs to me that it would be so much easier to like let loose or something because, like, you, like, the knowledge that you're surrounded by people who you have no, you have no idea who they are. You don't, like, you don't know them. There's no, there's no, like, outside pressure or preconceived notion about who you are. Yeah. There, you know, and that's like a worry too is that it's like you, you have this sensation that, like, if someone who knows you well, sees you acting in a way that is not in accordance with how they already know you. Yeah. That that person is going to think that you are like being like fake or something. Yeah. And that that will be bad. Right. You know, so it's like, man, I've never seen this side of him before. I don't even know what's going on right now. Like, who are you? Right. And it's like, like that worry is like, Ooh man, like I don't want to, I don't want to instill that on someone. Right. And it's like, that's, that's the fear that I think, um, I think you can like box yourself into how, like other people see you. Yeah, sometimes. for sure. For sure. Like, and, and then like, I will only act inside these bounds because otherwise people will think differently. And like, I'm, it's like, I am safe and comfortable in the way people see me now, even if it's not necessarily the truest form of my self-expression. Yeah. Well, and so this is kind of interesting because I, I have experienced this a couple of times in my life where, um, like the whole kind of you know, mantra for this podcast, for example, is like the strong opinions about weak things. So the idea is like, like take something that doesn't like really like super matter or whatever, but then like feel like over the top about it. Um, I would say that there are certain things like that where I may have been like in a relationship in my life before and held one of these like really strong beliefs about something that's like a, a pretty weak topic. And it was always like, um, you know, I would, you, you could probably use like V-necks for example, as, as just like a, like, oh my gosh, I would never wear V-necks. And I think I've given this example before. And then it was almost like I, um, you know, was no longer with that person anymore. And it was almost like, huh, nobody really, nobody else really knows that I held this opinion about wearing a V-neck. And so now I could just go do it and it would be fine. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and it's like, it's almost like, hmm, 
you know, I was sort of letting that that strong opinion. It was it was part of who I was. Right. And so it's like, but now no one knows right. that this is part of who I was. So now yeah. I can just go do that thing. But like the the truth is you could always go do it. You could always go do it. Exactly. Right. It's like, but but I also think that's something that people uh, and, and maybe this is this fits into this conversation somewhere and I just don't mentally know how yet. Um, but it but it's almost like you're afraid of what people might think if you change your mind about anything that you've spoken loudly about. Oh, right. Ever. Yeah. Like fear of hypocrisy. Yeah. It's like like th- th- it's such a weird thing. It's like if it's so. I, yeah, I think it dictates so much. Like I said something once and if I change my mind, people are going to call me a hypocrite. And it's just like the fear of hypocrisy holds people to things forever when it's like what what is the end? Like what is the actual consequence? It's like, hey, you said something else. And it's like, yep. That's the that's like that's the whole consequence. You no, know, it, it's, it's like, a, like it, that's basically it. Like what what actually happens? Right, 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 right. Know? Yes, yes. And that's the thing, though. I mean, that's that's where it's like there there is like and, and maybe it's even again, it's it's projecting onto yourself how you feel you may feel about somebody else for acting in a way that is hypocritical. Right. And then you're like, oh my gosh, you know, they just said this thing like a few weeks ago, but look at them now and they're doing this. And so it's like, you're being critical of them. And then therefore you fear that someone will be that same version of critical back towards you. Mm -hmm. And so then it sort of like locks you into like a, a a certain like way of thinking or, or position on something because you don't, you don't want to end up being seen the way that you saw someone else. Right. Or it's like, I feel like so often if like, if someone is right at you or something, like if they, if they have the correct or, you know, they say something, you disagree, you're loud about it. Later on, you change your mind. It's like, I, even though I now realize it's like, I can't feel that way because I can't let that person be right. Yeah. You know, (laughs) and it's just like that person's not even around. It does not matter. You can just be right. Wouldn't you rather be right? Well, and that's the thing is that like, I feel like I have come down a lot on laying claims to things that d- laying claims to how I think I feel about something. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think that at some point in time I realized like just saying like, I really don't know enough about this topic to like have a strong opinion about it was, was like legitimately like one of the most freeing sentences right. that I could have <laughs> because like you could see somebody like get like really upset about something or really up in arms. And it's kind of like, like, I, I, I'm not here to disagree with you, but I also don't like you clearly know more about it than I do. Yeah. And so it's like, I don't want to say that I disagree, but I also don't feel like I, I, that I do agree. Yeah. But like, I don't think I can like, you know, stand here on firm ground and say that I disagree. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a big one. Um, and it, it's a it's a weird sense of I don't even know if you could call it like pride mm-hmm. because you know I would like to think that pride is more thought out maybe like something that you'd be proud of but like the position that you stand in it's almost like you've got like cement blocks on your feet right you know? like it's like now now I'm stuck here now you're I, stuck I, I've expressed it this is it me. yeah it's who so I am it's it's hard to backpedal with concrete yeah. blocks on your feet <laughs> there's no doubt about that. All right. Transition. Ben, can I give you a fun fact about Abe Lincoln? Dude, I couldn't. There's nothing that would make me happier. Okay. This was, I thought, a very fun fact. Uh, As ever, Lincoln just continues to surprise me. Just as always. At this point, he is reliable in this regard. It's just like, you cannot believe the life this person had. (laughs) Is there something about Abe Lincoln's appearance that makes it so that, like... Like, is he, is he so tall that like you, you like would tend to assume that his accolades might be like lesser or something because it's like, well, who could be this accomplished and six, (laughs) four, you know what I mean? Like, Like, who's that great? It's just like, I think it's because you always think of him like as the president or something. And it's just like, yeah, but he had like a whole life before that and stuff. He seems so dignified. Maybe that's a part of it as well. Yeah. Like it's. It's like I tend to not see like I, I I imagine him as like so incredibly stoic yeah and and maybe less um like you know so so bubbly but the you know if he was if he was elected like I mean a very big part of yeah whatever not that any of these things that he's ever done is necessarily directly tied to his bubbliness but yeah. <laughs> you know I'm I'm just saying I think there's room for Abe Lincoln's bubble bath <laughs> <laughs> Abe Lincoln's bubble bath oh my goodness 
that the that's probably that probably exists somewhere. It's got to. Got to, you know. Um, okay, so this is uh, something he did when he turned 21 years old. Okay, uh, so three. This is not the age, the drinking age, during his time. N- um, I guess not. It doesn't really have to do with drinking or anything, though. Oh, okay, I was just it's trying. Just, to, I was wondering if he like had like a, a like a super kegger or something. Okay, no, 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 no. Okay. Um, this is basically what he did is was, he's like leaving home to go from like from frontier life to like big city life. Okay. But the way it doesn't, he doesn't take the road. Instead, he builds a canoe. No, he doesn't. <laughs> no, he doesn't. Who is this and, man? <laughs> and takes his like, like, thou- like crazy long canoe trip. Man, it doesn't say how long the trip was. I feel like it was really i think it was like a 65 mile canoe trip or something okay up river um at one point seven miles into it uh his canoe breaks oh uh, yeah he built okay this is what it says all right yeah at sangamo town seven miles northwest um northwest of springfield he built an 80 foot flatbed boat the canoe and set off for new orleans but ran aground at the mill dam below the new salem bluff undaunted he saved it from sinking with an auger commandeered from the village copper shop copper shop before continuing his journey what on earth i know so apparently like when he was like in his early teens he like worked at this like riverboat company like i guess i don't know ferrying stuff (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but so when he turns 21, like at the, this is apparently like it was a very um, impactful trip for him, like as a young man, like his like is sort of like his leaving the country and like going to like the big new world or something. You know, but it's just like, can you just imagine just being like, I'm just going to I can't get there. But you know what? I know how to build a boat. I got a river right here. River's going to take me to the city. I'm going to just go. <laughs> See ya. I'm going to just go. I'm going to just go. I've been too terrified to leave the town that I grew up in, and there's lots of support around me, Mm -hmm. and I had a a car (laughs) and highways and all the rest. And here Lincoln is just being like, you know what? I'll go by river. It's fine. It's fine. I'll build my own 80-foot boat and uh, just go. It's fine. Yeah, at 80 feet, I'm not sure. I think that that qualifies officially as a yacht. He says he built an 80-foot flat boat. A A flat boat. A flat boat. A flat boat. And set off for New Orleans. <laughs> I don't know what a flat boat is. 80 feet seems so big. It seems huge. Like he had, he probably had plenty of room to practice like basketball on that yeah. thing or something. Just, <laughs> just doing his wrestling matches up there. I'm literally imagining like a basketball court just yeah. floating down the, the, the river. Anyway, today it's known as the Lincoln Heritage Water Trail. Uh, and it's like, a, I guess, like a canoe trip. People like actively just kind of go and do and do his journey it's like yeah you can take lincoln's trip is it is it traditional to also bring your own 80 foot boat i probably not most people probably just use regular more modern boats i have to imagine okay can i can i lob something out at you lob it out what do you think that you and i could go and do the lincoln journey i mean i don't i don't see why we couldn't it seems i mean if lincoln could do it at 21 years old it's certainly <laughs> solo two podcasters two, in their 30s could do it we have not zero canoe experience not zero we've been on the river man well, it's this is all it's everything's coming up aces for us it I seems think. like to me based i'm like wondering what is the the actual river he was on i don't know it seems like if you had an 80 foot boat you couldn't even put that on the rivers around here in certain spots. Oh yeah, no, I was gonna say like I mean, yeah. you, you would need you quite need a, a large river. You need like, quite a body of water. Yeah, eighty feet on like the like the Roanoke River here where we live. Yeah, would I mean that would be literally you'd be touching both ends of the river at the same time. Yeah, that'd like be both, ridiculous. Both banks at the very least. So mm-hmm. cornering would be that'd be a challenge. That'd be a challenge. I can see why you'd break down. I wonder if he used like a stick, you know, like across yeah, just the bottom like, and just sort of like. It would seem like so many, so many paddles. Yeah. It seems like if you could touch the bottom with a stick, though, there's, it doesn't seem like deep enough. It seems like you're bound to hit shallow water eventually. And then, yeah, like with a canoe, you can get out and like drag it. You can get out and drag it. Yeah. They weigh yeah. like, you know, maybe, maybe 65 to 100 pounds, but mm-hmm. like 80 feet, even if it was made of like nylon, would probably still be exceptionally heavy. It, it does seem like, yeah, it'd be really 80, 80 feet of anything is going to be heavy. Right. <laughs> if it's a boat. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So anyway, well, bucket list. The Lincoln 
the uh, the Lincoln Heritage Water Trail. I love it. There we go. Okay. Well, so now this is this is kind of interesting because you and I do have a uh, hiking trip on the horizon that we do that we're, we're going to be doing um, Linville Gorge in uh, North Carolina, which I I think I have said this before, but I think it's like the Grand Canyon of the East. The Grand um, Canyon of the East. I don't really know if that is like an official title for it or if it's just something I've seen written before. It's but. so funny that you bring it up that way because if someone was like, yeah, you're hiking the Grand Canyon, like in my mind, the hike itself would be not what I was thinking about. It would be mostly about like the scenery and the kind of sights you would see as you walked this like very long path. Yeah. So far, because you guys did this hike through Linville Gorge like two years years ago yeah and mostly what i've heard about it is just that it was like the most challenging thing you've ever done yeah and so like in my mind all i'm even thinking about at all is like mostly just walking in the woods forever um like it doesn't even occur to me that there will be like sights to see oh but there will be <laughs> oh, okay yeah, it's it's absolutely beautiful which is awesome that does that does make it better um but no me and you were talking about this over lunch today because you were you were talking like i'm i'm so excited about it like yeah we have our our green mallard association like group chat yeah and so we were all texting last night about like gear and and like how we were going to like set up and do tents and stuff like that and i like alice was just like you just came alive like, <laughs> like i was like jumping up and down in like the kitchen and I was just like excited about stuff and I was like pacing and you know like we were giving Addison a bath and I keep like going over and checking my phone and she's like what are you doing <laughs> like this is not like you um, and then we, you and I were at lunch today and you're like, dude, I cannot even believe that you're so excited about this because if I remember correctly, when you came back last time, you were like verging on like furious as to how hard it was. Yeah. And I cannot even begin to describe cause you're at, you're so correct. Yeah. Like it was so hard. Right. Um, that I'm like, I have no idea if this is like one of those things where I've just like blacked out all the bad parts or yeah. because I've done it before, it'll be like, no, I'm, I'm more prepared this time. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure you'll be way more prepared. Yeah. Uh, this time and just have like such a better, like mental, mental game going in as to like what you're going in for from the start. But yeah, it has been like so interesting. Cause like, um, the last time you guys went, I remember being like so bummed that I couldn't go. I know. Um, and then like you guys all came back and I was just like, it was like, there was th th like mixed feelings on my own end because part of me was like a little vind like it was like a little bit of like uh, like a relief almost like it just sounds like no one had any fun and <laughs> um, so I was like well maybe it was a good thing I didn't go and it sounds like they won't be going again because it w just wasn't that great so um, but we wanted to go with you what so we had to go again because we wanted to go with you oh, okay that's obviously why it wasn't any fun the first time the, uh, yeah, clearly, you know what I, you know. <laughs> I absolutely think that this could be a, like factual because I have last <clears throat> night you were you were joking about how much uh, like the things that you were going to pack and you were like, I'm going to bring seven M&Ms. Yeah, for weight reasons. You know. <laughs> Dude, I was like, I had tears coming out of my eyes over the idea of packing <laughs> seven M&Ms. This is it. One handful. <laughs> yeah. This, this is, is like, going to do me. It's like, like maybe like once every like four hours I'll have an M&M. Yeah. Little, yeah. Little boosts of energy. Um, but no, so I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm very excited about it, but it's also been very interesting that this like thing that was so, that was like such a gauntlet, yeah. uh, is now coming back around the bend and it's going to be so fun. And I actually think it's funny because the, like the other reason why we're, we're giving it another stab is that we're doing the, um, the event at GoFest yeah. here the weekend of October 15th. Mm -hmm. So if you want to, it's a, it is a, uh, live episode of the pop. Uh, that we are going to be doing at an event called GoFest, which is free to enter. Uh, it just is in Roanoke, so you have to be in Roanoke to to attend. Yep. Uh, we'll be going on at 2 p.m. in the afternoon on Saturday, uh, in case you want to come. And uh, but like one of the big things is that because it's like it's go outside festival. Yeah. And so they know enough about like what we do and stuff like that 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 they wanted to extend the invite for us to come and be a part of this like very Roanoke mm -hmm. event. Yeah. But, um, the, one of the aspects is like, could you guys try to talk about like outdoor stuff? Yeah. And it was like, well, I mean, we I tell mean, camping stories, yeah, you know, it, sometimes I know, I know we've been on some adventures, you know, right. throughout the years. So these are like, these are the stories we got to tell, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. like, um, but we've also told many of them. And so, you know, it was, th this was, this was like part of like how we got here, but it was like, okay, so we need something outdoorsy to talk about. So maybe we should just go and submit ourselves to the elements again. We'll just go do it. 
we'll just go do it. And then when we're at GoFest, we'll be able to have like the the official recap episode of of Linville Gorge. Of the Linville Gorge hike. Right. But it's so interesting to me because it's it's gonna be it's gonna be such a big thing to do again. And I find it just absolutely hilarious that the motivating factor behind it was this email that we unexpectedly got one day mm-hmm. to go and do the pop in person, right? Which is going to be super cool. And and so now, as a result, it has led us down this proverbial path. Yeah. How far is the hike? I think it's. I want to say it's like twenty eight miles. Okay. 20, I'm going to say it's somewhere between twenty eight and thirty two, depending on if we do the extra loop that John's going to want to do. No, we're not doing that. <laughs> yeah. He, he's gonna suggest it i know he's gonna suggest it yeah <laughs> so i don't know we'll see this is the thing this is this is actually like it this i feel this will be my layer of defense right is this, this is the nature of doing things with john is that like you'll go and you'll do it and it'll be hard and then like the next time you go you'll think like okay but at least i know what to expect this time but you won't because john will have toned down how extreme he actually wanted it to be the first time which was still pretty extreme it's so true <laughs> and then you get there and it's just like it like i wouldn't like uh, but he's like he's afraid if he tells you ahead of time you're not going to want to do it it's true which is also true <laughs> also it's true. annoying how effective it is because he's like yeah but now we're out here like so i like we could do it you don't want to it'll be fun and it'll be fun. And what, what else is like john carlin you want to do it yeah <laughs> so he's like john, you want to do it man and yeah so we'll see we'll see how we're feeling uh once we're out there about how much extra walking we want to do <laughs> right right but the, i mean yeah. the, the other thing too though is that like i and i was telling alice this is that throughout our lives it is really remarkable to me that like all of our absolutely like our favorite stories to like retell yeah. throughout the years are almost always the stories where something was just going like horribly wrong. Yeah. You know, and it's like, oh, but that's what makes it so great. Remember that time like that we we camped in a cave and we totally like turned off all of our clocks and we ended up being in there for like an extra 15 hours. And yeah. <laughs> Nobody knew, and they thought we were lost forever, and it's like, ah, good times. <laughs> ah, good times, good times. The, th- the thing about, like, some of the stuff, it's like, you go in, you know, like, like you know it's going to be hard, or you know it's, like, going to be, it's like, the things that go wrong end up being the things that make the stories, but, like, in the meantime, like, you're having fun, at least while you're doing it sometimes, it's like, this one, I'm, it's like, I'm, I just don't even know. You guys have talked, like, the difficulty up. So maybe this is good. Maybe it's like when people talk up a movie so high in your mind, you're like, this is going to be the best movie I've ever seen. And then you go and you're like, it's kind of underwhelmed. Oh, yeah. Like, maybe in my mind, I'm like, I'm prepping for Everest or something. And I'm going to, like, get out there and just be like, well, you know, it wasn't really that bad. <laughs> uh, dude, I, I legitimately, I'm not going to lie to you. I am, like, 1,000% hoping that that is exactly what's happening. Yeah. Is that Me we're, too. Is that we're just like, <laughs> it's like, oh, my gosh, it was so difficult. Here's like, my hope is that we finish and. And I get to make fun of you guys forever for thinking it was hard. <laughs> okay, I'm fine with that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm completely fine with these circumstances. Yeah, if that's if that's what ends up happening, then we're all high fiving and probably eating. Yeah, like, you know, a sub or something. It's gonna be great. You know, we're gonna need some carbs after yeah. all that. For sure. Yeah. It's like, yeah. What? This is the thing. It's like you want like you want your pack to be light, but also you definitely need a lot of food, and the food itself will be heavy. But the more you consume, the less you'll be carrying. And I know, yeah, I know. But then also, the more tired you are, because the more time has passed. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, but the food should be giving you energy, conceivably. Oh yeah, absolutely. Right, yeah, especially if you're doing it right. Yeah, which we will be yeah. this time, no doubt, for no sure. doubt. Um, no, the other, the other kind of like interesting thing about this though is I, I do feel like, um, for for whatever reason. Uh, this idea of these like treks of sorts Mm -hmm. stand out to me as it, it, it it feels like, it feels like something is like kind of like crystallizing about myself before my eyes just a little bit, which is like, I've, I've always kind of had this wondering when we were kids, our parents, I'm trying to, I'm trying to set this up properly in a way that makes sense. When we were kids, our parents were like marathon runners. Right. And like, it was this thing that just sort of seemed um, so momentous to me. Mm-hmm. Like they spent so much of our childhood, like, you know, going and doing these like training runs and like doing, you know, like raising money for the different organizations that they were like fundraising for as they were, you know, doing them. And like, it, it, they always had these like groups that they were like affiliated with as part of it. It was like a massive part of their identity. And it was also something that they were doing that was like, um, maybe not, the most commonplace either. Like it was a pretty unique hobby for them to have 
together. Mm-hmm. And so I think that like it's it's instilled in me this like sense that like this is like an absolute like essential part of like who you become a part of your self expression mm-hmm. as an adult is like what will what will my like marathons be? Yeah. You know, like what will like mom and dad had that, like what will mine be? Mm-hmm. And um I'm like, I, there, there's a part of me that like could see a scenario where it's like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna get into like hitting the peaks, so to speak. Mm-hmm. So I know that I've expressed it to you that like I've wanted to do like Kilimanjaro before, yeah. in Africa, um, which is like, I, I th- from what everyone I've like read and seen and been told and researched is a like, despite being like one of the highest peaks on the planet, is like an approachable hike sure like they say like beginners can do it okay and it's like okay okay all right i can that but like but still they'd be like it'd be pretty cool to say you've done kilimanjaro no doubt and to go to africa and like yeah. just be a part of all of it um so now i feel like it, it, it's it's i feel like i want to bring it up because i feel like if nothing else the pop is like a it's like a um like what, what are those things you bury like a time capsule yeah you know it, it's like in some ways I feel like the pop is like our time capsule. So it's like, I want to bring it up because like 10 years from now, you might come back and listen to this episode and be like, Oh my gosh, this is like the start. This is the thing. This is the start. And then like they did all those things. So step one, North Carolina, step North two, Carolina. Africa, <laughs> the big leap, big step, big step, big step, big ocean. Big step. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Lots of steps actually. Yeah. To probably that. tons of steps. Right. Tons of steps. I've been taking lots of steps though. We've been doing the step competition all month. We have been doing a step competition. Yes, we have. Um, so this is something that we do through our, through our Patreon, through our discord. Um, and it's kind of, we did one in June. We're doing another one here in August and, uh, it has been really cool to, uh, I think watch you get into it. This, this go round, like you have been fierce, with your step in like i like I, I feel like i walk in in the morning you're at your treadmill desk like moving man like you are moving getting the steps in just ready to go ready to go yeah it's been really fun we've been doing we broke it in i think we've talked about we broke it into like four different teams this time yep so i'm on the we're like all the different elements so air fire water earth and i'm on the on the fire nation i don't want to brag or anything but the fire nation is has a pretty commanding lead you know just saying does it just saying you know we're in front it does average steps so we're at 192,176 average steps total okay yeah water second place 179 <laughs> Wow. 13,000 back <laughs> shots fired. That's right. <laughs> oh my gosh. So it's on basically is what I'm hearing. It's I, just, on. I need to go. I need to go step from sun up till sundown mm-hmm. just to uh, sundown. <laughs> yeah. Till, till sun up till sundown. Yeah. You do that, Ben. Definitely yeah. step only during that time period Definitely from sun up to sundown. Yeah. There we go. How many days? That's da- the same time. <laughs> right. <laughs> we don't have a whole lot of days left though. No. Yeah. August is almost over. So that's when it'll end. The whole group, the discord as a whole, we set the goal for 35 million steps as a whole to hit for the month. And we passed it. So we're at 106% now. I have to tell you that that was like really cool because yeah. I, um, I am the one who, who set our stepping goal yeah. and it's difficult to determine what an appropriate number is going to be Mm -hmm. because like obviously across the like everybody who's participating in it you know you you're you're some guesswork involved as to like how many people will actually want to like play the game yeah and then from there like everybody has a completely different like set of circumstances in terms of like what their step numbers might look like Oh, absolutely and so you know you want to you want to make sure that you know you're you're setting it somewhere that's like achievable and the the first go round, I think I set like ten million steps, which we absolutely just like abolished. The straw, yeah, hit, hit about yeah, like yeah. tripled it. Yeah, tripled it. And so coming into this one, I, so the, in June, I think collectively we got like right at thirty million steps total. And so I was like, man, like that was everybody like going pretty full like speed ahead. Yeah. So is like is adding an extra five million on top of that even possible? Like, am I in the zip code? Yeah. Turns out you were. Tur- turns out. Yeah. Turns out. And I've been so impressed with everybody. It's it has been it has been really, really cool. Um, as far as different activities that we do through the Patreon, it is one that I feel like I can very highly uh, you know, recommend and would like encourage if if anybody out there is like, man, I'd like a way to be like a little bit more, 
you know, mobile or active or, or want some encouragement from some other people. It's a very like community driven event. So yeah, it's been very fun. It has been. So yeah, if you, if you have any interest in uh, checking it out or other future uh, Patreon exclusive events, you can do so at patreon.com slash popcorn culture. Um, Discord access comes at the $5 tier. Uh, and then you can also come and be a part of like the Discord community. Yeah. So there's all sorts of chatter going on all the time and always. Super fun. Super fun. Yeah. Ben, can I tell you, so something else that I feel like I've been doing kind of fierce here lately. Yeah. That um, I just, I feel like would be maybe fun to talk about here because I know it's been um, a lot of work for both of us has been our uh, present series on YouTube called What If Harry Potter Had Been Sorted in a Slytherin House? Goodness gracious. Dude. Dude, if there, I mean, I don't know, like, Alice can tell yeah. that I am like, like, like when I get home and I was like, yeah, we were working on the what if series and she's like, oh dear, do you need to sit down? <laughs> do you, do you want a beer or like take a bath? Um, yeah. I don't, I don't know if you've been, ex- I mean, it seems like you have been like, you, you've definitely been like grabbing the bull by the horns with this one. Um, it is like a very fun experiment but it is like a mental monster it is it is great yeah it has been a lot of fun so like um we decided we were going to start trying to make these like what if videos and the very first one we did was just like what if Sirius had been the secret keeper how would that have changed the story and it's like it's such a decision that happens so far before the books start that like you can sort of work out all of the potential plot lines pretty quickly like they fizzle out into like you just can't tell no, right, right, like, right. Like like at, at some point happened. in time, it's like you, it, it, it's verging on on like fan fiction in a way because you do ultimately need to like assert some new decision making or some new like kinds of opinions or like this person now has a crush on this person instead. And it's yeah. like, there's, there's no way in hard facts evidence to say like that's how it would have gone down. That, the, the, that this is how it would have gone down. Right. And so like it, it, it's... It's very and so what we've been doing, yeah, because you're exactly right. Like with with the serious episode, it was like you you immediately find out like the biggest ramifications, try to figure out like how they impact things, and then just follow like the clues from there as it like shakes itself out. Yeah. With this though, it's like okay, chapter sixteen. Oh my gosh! Yeah, it's like when we started. Yeah, like doing Order of the Phoenix, which is the one that's going up. I think today we're actually pushing it back a day because uh, our recording session was two hours yesterday, possibly the longest we've ever recorded for anything for like a a, vid- a scripted video. Uh, I, I, it's possible it's the longest we've ever recorded anything ever. Well, I mean, even like the pop is already longer. Well, no, no it's, it's not. not the recording session. You're right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just like one of the longest recording sessions ever and it's like you go to start writing it and the way i've been doing it is just trying to like read the books like um as much as i can like while we're doing it and for like sorcerer stone it's not that bad because the book's pretty short you can like power through it especially if you're gonna like listen to it at like a fast speed and like you can just remember all of the plot points yeah or whatever but like order of the phoenix quite the tome you know it is it It is. is it's a like it's a beefy book. it is a beefy one and like not only that we're getting to this part where like like we're far enough in that enough like branches that like when you start you know like yeah one or two three things are different like oh isn't that different but now we're like so far in like the branches that are different are like very different so it's like okay this is what's happening this is sort of what will always happen but like how will it affect the main story now because th- this thing happened three books ago and that sent us in this direction instead and yeah it's like you did it's it's like okay harry wouldn't be here because he'd be in he normally he's in gryffindor and this is that and it's like some other thing a lot of the like things still end up sort of happening in kind of the same way but like it's it's so much to juggle like you're uh, juggling like literally two different like canons yeah at once because you have like the normal narrative and when it really comes down to it it's like like with the order of the phoenix for example it's like harry's gonna still end up at the ministry right you know like hard stop like be, like at the, at the department of mysteries because like like the story still needs to follow yeah a path yeah. where we're not just like making up like and now he goes to ireland for a day like, yeah you know it's like this is, this is yeah because it's like that's sort of the tricky thing is like it, as we've been going through it i have not like you know i'll start writing and i'll be like i don't really know exactly where it's gonna go right like you know i'm not like absolutely trying to steer it in any other direction in particular it's sort of, i feel like it's it's been such a weird like creative um 
I don't know, experiment because it's like, I feel like really what I'm trying to do is just like discover what would happen if Harry was in Slytherin. You know, I'm not like, oh yeah, okay, so if Harry was in Slytherin, actually um, Neville defeats Voldemort and here's why. And then like, you know, I'm not like trying to steer it <laughs> Right, yeah, right, I don't have right, like an yeah, end goal yeah. in mind. Right, when Other Harry's th- yeah, yeah, when Harry's not like the Gryffindor chosen one, then right. Neville all of a sudden does kind of become the chosen one because of these reasons. Um, yeah, no, you're you're absolutely correct. Like I, I've thought about that on numerous occasions, where it's almost like we're we're sort of along for the ride as I, much as everybody else yeah. is. <laughs> Just we're doing it like with a little bit more like then what would happen next? Exactly. It's um, like okay, so then okay, so Harry wasn't here. That means that doesn't happen. If that doesn't happen, this is not. This is not but like. Um, so my experience this week was that like um, when we were writing the Goblet of the Fire ep- Goblet of Fire episode, I was at the beach and we had like a week off, and I was doing the step competition. So like whenever we put the kids down for quiet time, I would like go on this like try and go on like a long walk and listen to as much of the book as I could, so I could like get my steps in and like be prepping for when we got back from the beach, right? To, like write the script, and I had like this huge long document, and I was like, okay, ready, and then I could kind of like plug it in and go, and it still took a long time to write, but then. We got Order of the Phoenix, which is an even longer book, and I didn't have a full week to like listen to it and stuff. So it was like, we got like, um, I, I as as I was listening to it, uh, I got maybe like sixteen chapters in. I had a bunch of notes, and I remember the first day I sat down and I went through all those things, and like I feel like everything I'd written down and taken notes on, I was able to write pretty quickly. But then I like sort of caught up to where I was in the book, and I was like, now. I don't know what happens next. <laughs> I know, yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. Like, so the only way, because because you'd think it's not just like one little plot point at a time. It's like it's like tiny interactions have these like butterfly effects. So it's like you feel like you have to reread almost the entire thing, um, like each time to like make sure you're not missing some little thing where it's like, oh yeah, Draco yells at Harry and then he's going to attack him behind his back and that's when Moody turns him into a ferret. Like, that's not really that big a deal except that like Draco and Harry and our version of things are are friends or not friends or at least at that point in the book but like but, the, but they're like, not like enemies they're not like enemies it's like Draco wouldn't have attacked him so Moody wouldn't have turned him to a ferret so this 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 wouldn't happen it's like that's just like a tiny little thing and does it have all these repercussions and it's like it just kind of goes down the line but so my experience this week was we got um to yesterday or it was Tuesday night and I was like I I just I I I need to listen to more of the book. I need to read more of it. So Beth was going to bed. It was like nine forty five or something. I was like, I think I'm gonna stay up and try and like work on the script some. I stayed up until three thirty in the morning. No way. I didn't <laughs> yeah. even realize it was that late. Yeah, I was up until three thirty, just like li- speed listening to the book at like two times speed. And it was I was fun like watching because I've been, I've been going at like one point six speed and like you can like see like oh, if I go to one point eight, how many hours are left in the book? It's like oh. If I go to two parts, oh, and it's like it takes such huge chunks out of it. It's like I could listen this fast, <laughs> dude. That's yeah. exactly yeah. That is exactly it for me. And in, in Name of the Wind, and, and yeah. because I'm uh, that's I, it's like man, this is too long. This is too long. Yeah, if it's at normal speed. Yeah, but at double speed, it's like nah, that's pretty tolerable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can handle this. Yeah. So anyway, I got I, even even then up till three thirty. I did not get to the very end of the book. I didn't finish the script. We still came in and wrote for like another two hours the following morning. But like I remember thinking like as I like went to bed at 3 30 I was like I'm pretty proud of myself for like staying up and doing this like getting it done and like I woke up the next day and it, there's this like because I don't really stay up that late ever so like in my mind I was like this was kind of impressive look at me uh, like you know and like I was telling Beth she's like you said about 3 30 like you need to go to bed before that I want to stay up that late yeah take care of yourself oh <laughs> and I was just like like uh, immediately I was just like man I was uh, okay yeah but then I got to I like I got to work and I was ta- uh, was I think I was talking to like Ethan O'Reilly like oh yeah did you know when you started doing this project like it was gonna like kill you and I was just like no I didn't it was <laughs> oh yeah. yeah yeah so it's been like int- what, what all I'm really trying to say is I'm not like I wasn't upset with Beth or anything it was interesting to me that like if you were to tell someone in college that you stayed up until three in the morning like studying it would have been like yeah, yeah me too you know oh sure like, sure sure it would not yeah. have been met with anything it would have been like regular or whatever and it's like it's interesting to me that like now I'm at like such a stage in life where when I'm telling people this, they're like, are you okay? You know? <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's it's very interesting. And it's it's also true because like now being like like you're a parent of like three kids yeah. and like, you know, just trying to make sure that you're juggling like 
all of the various aspects of your life. It's like the idea of staying up till three in the morning. It's amazing how it's got this like domino effect where it's like, okay, but that means like, you know, the next day when I get home from work, I'm going to be like exhausted. Right. Like, you know, then, then I'm going to have to go to bed early. And then like, you know, that means that like, well, like whatever, you know, it just, it ends up being, it's, it's very interesting to me to look back on like the various stages of, of our lives. Like when we were, when we were so much younger and there was so much more like freedom, to do things like that because because as busy as you felt then there still was time to like recover right and i imagine that probably even now like there's that there's that outside chance was like oh my gosh back when back when they Mm. were still taking naps oh my gosh like (laughs) the freedom the freedom yeah i could go on walks at the beach and listen to my book and Mm -hmm. yep yep yeah that's gonna go away at some at some point you have to feel like they'll have enough independence that it's like they don't need i can just leave you here and you'll just be okay yeah oh yeah that's true yeah somebody was just telling me the other day that like um running in the like the age group from like 30 to 40 is like one of the most competitive windows of time Mm. was it beth who was telling me this it may not have been i don't think so maybe okay but so i I was like it's very interesting because i think i even understand like why that's the case Mm -hmm. and it probably even goes back to like mom and dad when we were kids which is to say that like i'm old enough to remember them doing their first marathon yeah and that's probably because it was like I was old enough to get dressed on my own. Right. I, was, I was old enough to go to the bathroom on my own. Like, you know, like all these things. And, and all of a sudden it's like maybe mom and dad did have like a little bit more bandwidth at their disposal to now chase the new activities. Right. And so I'm, I'm curious if that's like what makes people in like the years 30 to 40 so competitive for like hobbies and stuff mm-hmm. is because it's like now they have like, the resources and time right. for the first time in their entire lives right. to pursue things mm-hmm. yeah, at like, this level. Like when you were like in your 20s, you had like a lot of time, but not a lot of resources. And then like maybe you caught up, maybe, you know, you got a promotion or you did better at work and now you have a little bit more resources, but then you immediately have kids. So you have no time. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you, you hit this like sweet spot. It's like 37. It's like, man, what a time to be what alive. What a time to be alive. <laughs> what a time to be alive. Yeah. Yeah. Things to, say. things to look forward to. Yeah, right. At some point. At some point. Oh, man. That'll be... Um, actually, on this note, um, one of the things that like I do try and get away and do on the weekends, of course, is go to play like Pokemon. Oh, yeah, of and, course. Trading card game. Um, which, one, I've been playing with this my hilarious Morpeko V Union deck, which has won the last three tournaments I've brought it to. That's amazing. <laughs> it's been uh, amazing and hilarious. Not that they're like huge turnouts or anything in Roanoke, but the fact that it's been consistent, even in that much, I've been pretty proud of. Um, but more importantly, Ben, the world championships for the trading card game and basically everything Pokemon was last weekend, Okay, which was, it was very fun to watch. I've been watching the streams and stuff, which is really cool. But the important thing is that it means a new season <gasps> has started, Ben. The 2023 season is like off. Are you, you know? are you dropping something in our time capsule right now? Yeah, maybe, maybe. It's like, we'll go back and we'll be like, oh, this is the moment mm-hmm. that like the new season began. Yeah. Well, so the new season, so I've, I've been like... Like part of me, like there's been a bunch of regional tournaments and hap- that happened, you know, over the past year. And like, I haven't been that interested in like going to like a big competition or like trying to score championship points as it were, right, which sir. are what you need to qualify for worlds. Because I was like, I, I'm so new that you only get like sort of half a season. I'm really just biding my time until the next season starts, but that time has come. And so like now we're there now I feel like, okay, if I, if I really want to try and like qualify and get to like worlds or something i'm gonna have to actually start going to some of these tournaments now like now you it feels like you have enough time to go and do it maybe but i i so this is sort of my goal is to try and qualify for worlds next year which uh has been the location has been set and it is in um yokohama japan Ooh. i know so that's sort of that's like my my big long term goal. Hopefully, is that like around this time next year, trip to Japan. <gasps> yeah, but it's like this weird thing. It's like it it's such a weird thought because it's like just to go you have to qualify, but to qualify you basically have to play several other small trips. Oh, it's true. To get the points, it's true. And then you have to do well. <laughs> right. I know. I mean, yeah. it's it is amazing to me. Like. um, any any hobby at a certain level comes with <coughs> cost. Yeah. It, it seems like at least like where if you really want to like take it to that next level, it's like, okay, like this is going to start to become like a real 
a real thing. It, it is amazing to me that there are as many people as there are that are so good and so competitive and can also like handle the commitment yeah. of, of what it takes to like go and be like a part of this because yeah, you're absolutely <coughs> right. Like in order for us to go and get you into some of these regional tournaments, it's like, we've looked at it before, but like it means we need at bare minimum three day trips to cities where you would need lodging, food, all yeah. the rest. Like you need to be able to stay. And then it's like, you're operating under the assumption that you'll go to the finals. Like that's the, cause you that's need the to, goal. You need to at least have that be like a possibility. Like you can't, you can't be like, well, I'll leave Sunday. I'm sure I won't make it to the finals and then like make it to the finals and have to leave on Sunday. Um, but then uh, at the same rate is that if you don't make it to the finals, then all of a sudden you've booked through Sunday. Now it's like, well now we've, you know, now we're here and yeah. Um, not to mention, you know, you've got like your whole, your whole clan, your whole family. Right. Yeah. That's um, the thing. It's like, did you try and bring the whole family on all these trips? Is it just so like, I'll see you and we'll see you after the weekend. <laughs> right. Right. You know, it's like, I hear other people like, uh, like on, on the circuit as it were, talk about it. And it seems like, like the way a lot of people do it is they like all like, you know, carpool to a hotel and like three people sleep on floors and they split it. And it's just like, they sort of do that several times through the season. Like, that's obviously not what I'm doing. Oh, sure. sure, you sure. Know? Yeah. It's like, that's <laughs> not going to be my approach. I'm not some, you know, like I could see like, if I was like single in my twenties, maybe. But yeah. I could see like, this is a, what I'm doing now. It's a different era. It's a different era. I mean, and it reminds me of like the very first YouTube conference you ever went to, which was like a, seven, eight hour drive by yourself yep. to New Jersey mm-hmm. to spend an entire weekend walking a very small conference hall by yourself. Yep. And it was like, it was worth it at that point in time to, well, at least it seemed like it was worth it to you to, to go and do it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, th- like certainly, certainly some like more responsibilities and, and pieces of that puzzle to now need to need to be balanced. Yeah. And it also comes with like that opportunity cost of like, you know, n- now maybe that three day late weekend is, is going to be like the three day, like Cleveland, Ohio weekend. Right, where, yeah. <laughs> cause there's a, cause there's a regional there. There's a regional. I got to get the points, you know? So we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, that's my, that's like my, my 12 month goal. So on the other hand, when I was staying up late to write our order of the Phoenix script, uh, the other night, like so much of it is just like listening as fast as you can to the book. So I was also able to sit there and like play like lots of games of Pokemon online. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Cause like I can, like I know the story well enough that I just have to like wait to hear the prompt and then just oh, pause. I mean, we're taking a note real quick here. Okay. But like the book is so long, you're just sitting there listening forever. So anyway, yeah, that was, it was like also a good little mini training session as well. Nice. Just, like getting a bunch of reps, you know, I love it. I love it. Um, well, so I'm, I'm, I'm here to help you on the journey as much as I'm able to oh, thank you. Help, help coordinate, you mm. know, pull some, pull some levers and see such. you guys in Yokohama. It's going to be on. It's on. It would be, it would be rather remarkable because we've been talking about it for you know, a couple of years now. I know. I feel like, I feel like it's like, I, my concern is that this has been a lot of people's plan. Like that a lot of people got into it over COVID. A lot of people were like, okay, half the season's over. I'll just wait. And that like everyone's been like waiting for this dam to break for the next season to start where they're really going to try. Yeah. So like part of me is concerned, like this season in particular might be like the most well attended season in the history of the game or something. It's entirely you know? possible, <laughs> but, but, but what a better time to win. What a better time to win. There That's right. I have all the faith in you. Well, we'll anyway, <laughs> guys, thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode of the pop. If you have any feedback for us, be sure to send it over to popcorn culture pod at gmail.com. Or if you would like to support us over on, on Patreon, uh, we have a really cool piece of quarterly merch that we are working on uh, at the moment. It is going to be a commemorative popcorn culture challenge coin yeah, yeah. Um, that I am very excited about because there will just be just like some just like some details, just some deets, man. You know, like it's just like the type of thing that like when you get it, you should just like look carefully at it. Yeah, you know, like you know. It, it could be interesting. Might be. Um, if you would like to check that out, it's patreoncom slash culture uh, at the twenty five dollars quarterly merch tier otherwise until next time pop pop